Welcome uh, from the vibrant city of Barcelona. I'm, my name is Bart van der Warp and I'm interviewing Professor Hugh Marcus, uh, professor in Cambridge in the UK, who yesterday presented the results of the vertebral artery ischemia stenting trial. Hugh, could you please explain what the background and aim of this study were? So this is a trial which looks at how to prevent stroke in people who have stroke affecting the blood vessels in the back of the brain. And in about a quarter of these people, the stroke is due to narrowing of the blood vessels in the back of the brain, something called vertebral artery stenosis. Um, and one of the ways you can treat it is to, is to stent it, so you can put an artificial lumen in the vessel up via a catheter which is passed up through the groin, open up the narrowed artery, and then you have a very good technical result. And this has been shown to be possible technically in many thousands of people worldwide and is used routinely in some countries. But what we don't know is whether it's actually better to do this or whether it's better to just give people medical therapy. And how did you address this question? So we did what's called a randomised controlled trial where we had people volunteered to go into the trial and they would be randomly um, assigned to either having medical treatment plus the stent or medical treatment alone. And then we compared whether the risk of stroke was higher in the people who had medical treatment alone or whether it was higher in people who had stent plus medical treatment. And how many patients did you include? So we put in 182 patients. Um, we had hoped to put in 540 patients, but we had quite slow recruitment and particularly challenges in um, taking the trial from the UK, where it was in 14 centres, into countries outside the UK. And after 182 patients, the funder who was providing support for the trial said we should stop recruitment but continue follow-up. So what we presented um, yesterday was the data for one year's follow-up in, in or the, um, the data one year after we'd stopped the trial, so every person within the trial had at least one year's follow-up, although some people would be following up for up to seven years. So what were the results of the study? So the um, study showed that patients who had had stenting as well as best medical treatment appeared to have a reduction in stroke risk of about 60%. Um, but this wasn't quite significant because of the sample size that we had and because of the fact that we didn't have the, the full sample size that we had hoped for. When we did more detailed analysis to account for differences between the two groups, it did just become significant. And do you think the problem is solved now? No, I think the results are very interesting and I think it looks as if there is a, a benefit from this treatment, I mean from our data at least, um, but conventionally if, you, if you're going to take treatment through into clinical practice and it will have a big impact because it would mean that everybody with this sort of stroke should have this treatment, you need data from significant clinical trials and ideally you need data from two clinical trials confirming the findings and showing that they are you know, real findings. So does the um, study already have clinical implications? Well I, I think in some parts of the world it may be used as, a, as a, you know, evidence that we should be um, stenting these patients but I think for example in the UK it will be thought of as being very interesting and I think people will say in certain cases maybe now we will stent patients we wouldn't stent but that if it's to become a standard treatment as, for example, um, if you have a narrowed artery in the, front, in, in the front of the brain called a carotid artery, it's standard treatment to remove that narrowing with surgery. If we're to take it to that level where it's part of our standard care, we will need another trial to show that. Okay, and did you identify a subgroup um, for whom the treatment might be particularly beneficial? What, what we did show was that the risk of stroke is high early, for early after your first stroke or mini stroke, and therefore you get the biggest benefit if you intervene early in these patients. So for example, we did an analysis where we looked at just those people who had had symptoms of a stroke or minor stroke within the last two weeks, and they had a bigger benefit than patients who were recruited later into the study. We also looked at whether there was a difference between people who had narrowing of the vertebral artery at the, the start of the vertebral artery or higher up within the brain than the vertebral artery. And we didn't really have enough people to convincingly show a difference, but there was some suggestion that perhaps a benefit may be greater for people who have a narrowing at the beginning of the vertebral artery, um, particularly because the risks associated with stenting in that site are very low. So we didn't have any complications of stenting at that site. And so you're suggesting we should do another trial, an even bigger trial? Do you think this is, will be feasible? Um, that's a very good question. Um, I think these studies need to be done in multiple countries. Um, mm. And if it was possible to do it in multiple countries, I think it's very feasible. I think it would be challenging to do a trial like that just in one country. Okay, and, and do you have the energy yourself to lead this trial? 
That's a good question. I have to think about it. It's only a day since we presented the results. Okay. Um, so to wrap up, um, you found that patients on medical care uh, might have a high risk of uh, new vertebral, uh, vertebral artery strokes um, in the first years. Um, this is something different, by the way, that was found in, than, uh, was found in the VAS trial, the Dutch trial, that um, had a similar question. Can you explain this difference? Yes, I, th I think it's, I mean, the, the VAS trial showed no difference between the groups when you looked at a follow-up, which was slightly shorter than the follow-up in our patients. So the longer the follow-up, the more likely you are to detect a difference because the risk, if you're doing an intervention in the intervention arm, occurs early on, just when you're, when you're putting the stent in, there is a risk of stroke and the benefit accrues over time. So the longer you follow up patients, the more likely you are to get a, a benefit. Um, also, the follow-up in our study was longer than in the VAS trial, but they were both relatively small studies. I mean, our study trial was 180 and VAS was just over 100. So there's quite a lot of um, lack of confidence in the results. We, we're not terribly secure when we've got these small sample sizes as to how, how robust the results are. Um, taking it all together, my interpretation is there probably is a benefit from stenting in patients, but we need more data to prove that. Okay, that's already a very good uh, wrap up, but um, in conclusion, stenting for vertebral artery stenosis, especially the extracranial vertebral artery stenosis, is still a promising treatment, but should be tested in a new trial before mm -hmm. we implement this in clinical practice. Is that correct? Yes, I think it's fair to say that following this, you know, it's back on the map and it's something that we really should be considering and it could be potentially a, an effective treatment in patients, but we need more data on it. Okay, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. Mm -hmm.